So good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our first ever live TV studio in isolation. This is this kitchen, my kitchen at home has been transformed into a little studio for us to do our live reporting from. Um, this evening I'm going to bring you fresh toad in the hole with tender stem broccoli, petit pois and an onion gravy. A bit of a cheats onion gravy but do you know what, we've got half an hour or so to do this so, uh, so, so we'll keep it short and simple. Um, so, to get us started, I'm going to start by just popping the oven onto 220 degrees. Nice hot oven for cooking Yorkshire puddings in. That's one of your main secrets. If you're going to get a good Yorkshire pudding, you need a hot oven. And whichever pan you end up putting your, uh, your batter into needs to be piping hot as well. So we'll, we'll come back onto that later on. So, to get us started, we're going to start by making a, um, a, our, our onion gravy. The onion is going to take a bit of time to sweat down, sweeten up in the pan. So we're going to start off doing that in this nice small saucepan. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that on there, no heat under it just yet, um, until I've got my onions prepared. So, looking at what we had left after isolation today, we've got a red onion, we've got a shallot, that's going to make a perfectly good um, good onion gravy. So to prepare the onion what I'm looking at doing is taking the top off and then putting it on that flat side going through the onion and then we're just going to pluck through the layers until we find some nice raw onion. There we go and then just peel that peel off just like so. Okay so make sure you're all that dry skin off the onion because we, if we end up chewing that later on it just makes the makes the gravy a little bit unpleasant, okay? And we'll get rid of the, the, the root off the onion as well. Same with the other half. So we'll just uh, pull off all the, all the skin. Okay, lovely. And same with that shallot, so we'll take off the top, slice it in half, pull the skin off. And then once we've got the skin off these onions, we're just, just gonna make sure we've got a nice clean chopping board so we don't end up getting any skin at all in the gravy. Because like I say, it's never very pleasant to, to slice into. Why have we chosen toad in the hole as a meal? Um, I love it because it's really, really good um, to make. I mean, you get a hold of a packet of soft skin for about, uh, for about £1.50-ish if you buy decent ones, or you know, if you're a bit of a cheapskate and you, you can only you know, afford wall soft skin, so, so they work just as well in this recipe. Um, but we, we, what we've gone for is a, uh, a sort of middle of the road uh, supermarket own brand sort of, sort of sausage. Um, we've got these from Morrison's of all, of all places. That's just where we do our uh, our shopping locally. If you're lucky enough to get down to your local butcher and uh, and get some of their own, you know, rare breed pork sausages, I'm sure they'll be much uh, preferable to ours. But uh, you know, well, what you got in these times? To make the uh, to make the batter out of. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows how to make a Yorkshire pudding batter out of flour and egg and milk. Um, what I tend to do, it's a bit of a cheats way of doing it, you just use one cup of each of the ingredients. So literally a cup full of eggs, a cup full of milk, a cup full of flour, and then you'll get a perfectly risen Yorkshire pudding if you follow all our little steps we're giving you right here. Okay, so there we've got our onion, our shallot all sliced up. I'm going to get our little saucepan and pop those onions and shallots in there. So I just sliced all these, um, and we're just gonna fry them off gently on low heat um, to try and get a bit of caramelization going on. So small pan, small ring, um, always a good good way to go. Um, if you put a small pan on a larger ring, not only is it, doesn't, does it not feet, heat up quite as efficiently, but you end up heating up the side of the pan rather than the heat coming from under, under, under the pan, which is what you're, uh, what you're really looking for. I'm just gonna pop a tiny bit of oil into those. Um, and a bit of salt and a bit of pepper as well. Okay, and then just grab one of our spoons. We'll just give those a little stir just to start them off. Okay, and they shouldn't need too much attention if that heat's nice and low. Um, we'll just move them around a little bit every now and again, um, and they'll be absolutely fine for us. Lovely. Um, so, once those onions have started softening off, now we can start concentrating on our batter. Okay? Now, I know it's an old, old, uh, old, old lady's tale that you should always let your batter rest for an hour or two, or even sometimes they say overnight. Um, but I'm just going to make it a la rash. Here we go. Um, literally just, just going to pop everything straight in that bowl. Um, so, I mentioned before, we're using a cup of plain flour. So, we've just got some nice organic Dove's Farm plain white flour here. Um, a fairly standard plain flour. We've got some milk, um, just semi-skin milk, 
and we've got, what else did I say? Eggs. Okay, so it's got four eggs. They're quite hard to get hold of in the supermarkets, I know. Um, we took a walk around the, uh, around, the, uh, around the local area and managed to find a farm that was selling eggs um, six for a quid. Thought that was quite good. Um, and we know as well that they're full, um, free range and the real deal. So what I'm going to do is just quickly tap that egg on the side of the cup and just pop the eggs in the cup. I'm hoping about three or four eggs gets you a cup of eggs. And I think I shouldn't be too far away there. I think that's that right. So we've got a cup of eggs, literally. So just below the rim, like you have your tea. And then pour them into a mixing bowl. Now we've got milk. So we need the same volume of milk. I'm going to pour that in with the eggs there. And then when you uh, do your flour, you're looking at getting exactly the same volume of flour there into the, uh, into the mug. And like I said, this is a pretty fail safe way. If you're making Yorkshire puddings on a Sunday, just follow all the same principles as we're following now, and you should get a fairly nice volume of Yorkshire pudding. Okay, so mug of flour, pop that in with the eggs and milk. Just give it a good clap, make sure you've got all that flour off the edge. Um, and then we can start whisking that together. So, just uh, just before we do that, our onions are starting to sizzle away there. Just stir them around. We don't want to get too much caramelisation on the bottom of the pan. If they do start to go a little bit brown, it's not the end of the world, because um, you can always deglaze it with a bit of red wine. Okay. Well, those onions are just starting to get my eyes a little bit. That's a bit, uh, bit cheeky. So, our Yorkshire pudding batter. As mentioned, we're just literally whisking it together. And into Yorkshire pudding batter, now you, you, you can very easily leave it as just, you know, flat flour, eggs and milk, but you can also add a bit of flavour to it in different ways. If you touch up a spoon of horseradish in, um, if you're making your um, Yorkshire pudding to go with a bit of roast beef, put a bit of, um, put a bit of that in the batter. But um, today we're doing bangers and mash, and I'm going to look for a little bit of whole grain mustard. Here we go. Um, and I'm just going to pop a teaspoon of whole grain mustard in there as well. So we've got like a mustardy Yorkshire pudding mix, which just, uh, just really adds to the flavour of, uh, of the dish. So we've just uh, whisked that in now. So we've got our little mustard seeds in there. And then just to add a bit more flavour. Got some fresh thyme. <coughs> hope that's not coronavirus coming on. Bit of a cough there. And we're gonna pop some fresh thyme into the uh, into the bowl as well. So a bit of fresh thyme. Stir that in. Good. So our onions are starting to soften now, but we're getting a little bit of caramelisation on the bottom of the pan. Just leave those there until that caramelisation builds up a little bit more. Um, and at this point, I'm going to pop my uh, pop my uh, frying pan on to start frying off these sausages. So you don't want to fry them on too hot a heat. Again, if you do them too slowly, you won't get any colour on the sausages. So we do want to get a little bit of colour on them. Um, Oil-wise, I'm just using some lovely British cold press rapeseed oil. Um, don't be shy with your oil, get a good layer in the bottom of the pan there, um, and that means that there's going to be plenty of oil to maintain the heat in the pan when you put the batter in to make sure that the Yorkshire pudding rises up nicely. So the more heat you can have stored up in that pan, the better. Okay, so I'm just popping my sausages in the pan now. We're just going to cook these sausages until we get a nice golden brown colour on them. Um, and once we get that nice golden brown colour, we'll get a bit of caramelisation, a bit of flavour. We'll pour our Yorkshire pudding batter into the pan with the sausages and then, um, and then we'll pop that pan in the oven. Now, while we're at it, tonight we have some wine. Wine is obviously a very key ingredient when you're doing the cooking. Um, I'm just going to take the top off this wine um, and take the cork out, so just get rid of the foil first of all. There we go, get rid of that. Now I've got my very posh um, Corkscrew that my dear beloved girlfriend got me for my birthday. It's a cork pops one. Um, to use this, all we do is get the needle 
just poke it into the bottle like that, press the top, and hey presto, out comes the cork. There we go. That's uh, that's ready for ready for the gravy now. So if you just have a look over here, we've got a little bit of caramelisation building up on the bottom of the pan. That's all lovely flavour. And we see those onions are starting to soften a little bit. So we'll pop a little bit of red wine in. And as we add that red wine, we can stir the uh, stir the onions around, and you'll see that that's just starting to lift some of the uh, some of that caramelisation off the pan, which is going to give us a lovely flavour in our gravy. Okay. So here we've got um, a little spatula now, and we're just going to turn our sausages over. You see, we've got a little bit of colour forming on those now. That's just what we're looking for. Fantastic. Lovely. Bit of brown. Bit of caramelization. That's just what we want. So, we've given a bit of wine to the gravy. We'll give a bit of wine to the chef as well. I mean, it's always, always good to, uh, to have a bit of wine. A little bit about this wine. This wine comes from a chap called Tom Janssen. Um, he's got a small wine supply based in Keltham. Um, great spot, you can get hold of uh, you know, small packet wines which aren't produced in, in, in huge volumes. This one we've got today is a Chateau Labadie Medoc. Um, it's made with a, uh, with, with a, um, a, a Bordeaux grape. Um, fairly young, uh, four years old, but uh, this, this one is one of those that's guaranteed to mature nicely over the years. Um, lots of tannins in there to probably do with, uh, with, with, with um, decanting if you're a bit of a wine but. Um, just to open the wine up to the air and the elements a little bit to, to, to really draw out the flavours and take away from the tannins slightly. But in all, not an offensive glass at all. Um, so, where are we at? Veggies for today. We, 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 we're going to do some. Uh, we're going to do some um, some tender stem uh, purple sprouting. There we go. I've got this lovely, uh, lovely purple sprouting from uh, from the uh, from the supermarket. It's in season now, which is fantastic. It's always good to use food that's in season. Support the British farming community. Um, it's really, really valuable to do that. Um, good. So those sausages. Now we'll just turn those over, and we can see that fat's really nice and hot in the pan. Now, um, you know, the sausages are sticking a good bit, and we're turning them. So what I'm going to do. Probably should have done this at the start, but just pierce the sausage um, with the tip of the knife, and that's just going to let any fat sort of drip out the sausage. And, the, and then the flavour from those sausages is going to start going into our yolks, pulling back as well. So, we've got an oven, it's really hot, it's at 220 degrees. So, what we're going to do now is get our yolks put in batter here, looking good. And we're going to pour this batter over the sausage, and then put them straight in the oven, okay? So we've got our sausages, you're putting batter in. Um, just, uh, I mean, if you need to, just uh, just move those sausages around a little bit. They won't be too hot, hopefully, says he. Um, and then we're gonna pop that into the oven, nice and near the top, because that's where your oven's always hottest. Okay, so pop that heat off now, um, and we'll give a bit more attention to our gravy. Okay, so. On, with the gravy, what we're looking at doing is uh, is using some of our bisto, like I like I said earlier. It's not ideal, but it's uh, it's perfectly fine in this situation to give us a quick gravy. And we, we're going to lift the flavour of the gravy loads with those uh, with those lovely caramelised onions that we uh, that we started off right at the beginning. You can see they're all really nice and soft now, um, and that will give the gravy a lovely sweetness. Um, so we need a little bit of water. So just grab some water. Nothing but the finest water from Seven Trent. We popped in about a, uh, a, a about a pint of water there. So that's a pint of water gone into this pan, and that will take about four tablespoons of a uh, of bisto just to, 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 to get a good uh, a good consistency of gravy. So I'm just going to get a, uh, a tablespoon out from the bisto. One, two. Three, four. I've got four dessert spoons there rather than tablespoons. Um, you don't want too much of the stuff, otherwise you end up with a sort of really thick, claggy gravy, which which just isn't overly ideal. So cold water, 
not too hot, add your bisto granules in, um, and then we're just going to let this heat up gently to uh, to give us our, uh, our, our lovely caramelised onion gravy. Um, what else? We've got a pan here ready to do our greens in. Um, when you cook greens, really important to remember to just put those greens into hot water um, when you cook them. When you cook greens as well, if you can put them into hot water and cook them at the last minute just before you eat them, you'll end up with a far superior um, vegetable than you would if you were to cook your veggies early and leave them on the side to, uh, to, 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 to rest before you, um, before you eat them. So we've got our toad in the hole in the oven. We're going to leave that in there for about 15 minutes, probably 20 minutes actually, it's quite a large one. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll get that out after about 20 minutes. You can probably see I'm looking around desperately for something. I'm looking around for a time because mine's run out of battery. So to reach over my trusty iPhone. In fact, you can call on Siri for this. It's quite a good tip if you ever you're in the uh, in the kitchen by yourself and you uh, and you really need a, uh, a timer. Say Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. And okay, 20 minutes and counting. That is just so so handy. Um, I love that. Another use for the iPhone. It, it, it seems you just literally can't get rid of uses for, for iPhones. So, good. Um, let's just talk a little bit more um, while, while that's cooking. Let's talk about the, the, how much this meal costs for us to put on the table. Obviously, you know, some, some of us might be out of a job right now, particularly if you're, sort of, uh, you're self-employed or if you just got back from doing a season or if you're, you know, I, I don't know, maybe you're just trying to make a, make a cheap meal um, and conscious about how much you're spending on food. Um, this is an absolutely brilliant one. Um, I tossed about how much we spent on the ingredients for this meal, and bear in mind we haven't got the cheapest flour. We've got our sort of organic Dove's Farm white flour. We didn't buy wool sausages. We bought uh, we bought you know Morrison's the best. Um, we 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 didn't use you know cheap cheap milk cheap vegetables. Um, this meal has cost us uh, cost us nine quid to put on the table, um, which, which is really really good because we're we're going to feed three of us for. For nine quid, it's going to be a good hearty, uh, good hearty dinner as well. So, yeah, really can't complain. That doesn't include the wine. The wine is available thirteen pound fifty a bottle from uh, from Tom Ironson Wines um, if you're interested. But it it, it is very profitable. Um, definitely worth a worth a sip. Cheers. <laughs> so great meal this is for if you're a student eating on a budget. Or, um, or, or like I say, you're, you, you're just trying to get, get meal on the table with, without paying too much money. This is just a fantastic way to go. Um, veggies, we've got some purple sprouting and we've got some petit pois peas. So um, lovely veggies, both I believe in season right now. I mean, peas probably strictly speaking aren't in, really in season until sort of May, June, just looking at my, uh, my chart on the wall of what's in season. Um, but but you know but they're they they're in season they they they're cheap they're frozen obviously another great way to buy veg um, if you're a student or if you're trying to get hold of veg cheap get frozen veg and it comes out a lot lot cheaper um, good the uh, so so like I said earlier cooking vegetables you want to do them in hot water okay so we're going to get our freshly boiled kettle from over here that we prepared earlier. Um, just bear with me. I'm going to pop this water in a pan, pop the pan on as well. And also, when you, uh, when you cook vegetables, always make sure you put a bit of salt in the water because that just adds to the, uh, adds to the flavour of the vegetables. Um, never be shy on your water as well. If you, can get a, if you cook a small amount of greens in a large pan of water, the water's going to find it easier to maintain its heat because it's a large volume. So, you, you, you end up with your, uh, your, your veggies really being you know, just a little bit al dente. I mean, I can confidently say with, the, with, with this purple sprouting, it's, there, there aren't big stalks on it. All it needs is about four minutes in the water. So we'll just wait till our time is down to about 16 minutes to put our vegetables in the pan. And then everything's gonna be ready, bang on time, all at, the, uh, all at the same point. So if you have a look at the gravy now, it's just started to thicken up nicely. There we go, look at that. And at this stage, I'm just going to give it a taste, just to uh, just to see how it's tasting. I must say that isn't too bad considering it's this day. Um, a bit of seasoning in there, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, always go as well. Um, and what I'm going to do is also just pop in a little spoon of Dijon mustard. Um, if I'm lucky, I might have some in the fridge. If not, we've got a fresh jar over there. 
that we can open up. And I think we're on to a fresh jar, so. So we've managed to get our hands on a big jar, but my able camera lady has just been pointed out that there's some on the shelf over there. Now, some people say, why would you keep mustard on a shelf? I've always, I mean, mum and dad always brought me up not being too strict with the whole food hygiene thing. I just keep my mustard on the shelf, keep my ketchup out of the fridge, keep my mayonnaise out of the fridge. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm still here to tell the story, so I, I can't believe it's that bad to, to, you know, keep your uh, mustard and what have you out of the fridge. Um, there you go, so we've got a bit of mustard in the gravy there as well. And what would also be really nice in here is a little bit of um, a red currant jelly, just to give it a bit of sweetness as well. So, um, I don't, do, you, do you know if we've got any red currant jelly? Oh, no. uh, red currant jelly. Can you put it in the bin? Uh, I think it's gone in the bin. Oh, well. Where are we? Uh, here we go, red currant jelly. Fantastic. It's amazing what you can find lying around. So, just a little teaspoon of that red currant jelly in there. Lovely. We've got a few sprigs of thyme left over as well. That's not going to do any harm to the gravy whatsoever. So a few sprigs of thyme in there, and that's just going to give it a nice aromatic herby flavour, um, which is just great. Super. Zaz Robs just texted me saying, thank you so much for dropping the shopping off to her granny. Zaz's granny tonight. Um, didn't have any tonic water and uh, it was deemed a, a, a really essential item. So uh, while we were out getting the, uh, the, the shopping for this, we, we managed to pick some, uh, pick some tonic water for a, for a granny in need um, who, uh, who I'm sure would appreciate it. So um, just, just coming back over here to, the, uh, to, to, to start doing the vegetables um, ready, for, uh, ready for cooking later on. Just making sure we've got everything prepared. Um, just clean off my board. So we've got no bits of onion left on there. Um, we're getting our tennis down. If, if there's any big clumps like that, what you want to do is just break it down a little bit. So we don't, don't need these outer leaves. Well, I mean, why not use them actually? I'm going to pull these uh, bits off the stalk. Just to sort of decrease the size of the head a little bit. And I'm just going to get, get rid of that little bit of stalk there. Okay, so it's quite quite large and fibrous that, and that that's not going to be too pleasant to eat later on. So uh, so we'll just uh, we'll, we'll we'll get rid. Good. And the main thing that I'm trying to do here, you might think, gosh, he's wasting a lot off there. But if you have thick bits of stalk going into your uh, your pan, you'll find that the thicker bits won't cook so well. And what you also find is that the, the lower bit of the stalk never seems to be quite as nice as the, as the top bit. So I'm just getting rid of that. And it's not to say this is totally waste. You know, if you're making a making a vegetable soup or something, or if you're uh, if you're making a salad and you've got a good you know blender like a Thermomix or a Magimix, you can always put broccoli stalks into those salads because they are a fantastic source of fiber. Um, dietary fiber, you know, it, it, it's so important. People, people, the the, the, the news, the media. Um, nutritionists talk about fiber these days it's so important to get that fiber kick in your diet just to uh, just to make sure that you know your your body's getting all the nutrients it needs and it seems silly as well to, to throw anything in the bin so we'll definitely be keeping these uh these stalks and making them into a nice little salad tomorrow um again quite a large stalk here so we'll just uh we'll pull off the uh the stalks lower down And then we'll chop the uh, stalk off. And I might just pop that stalk, a little crack down that stalk, and that's just going to help the stalk, you know, cut through, cook through rather properly. So, like I say, those uh, those stalks and leaves, we'll save those and put them in a in a salad at lunchtime tomorrow. Um, we love a nice crunchy salad at lunchtime. And then here I've just got some uh, some frozen peas ready to go in as well. And both those will cook in a similar amount of time. If anything, the peas will probably take a little bit longer, although they are petit pois, so nice and small and should theoretically cook through quite quickly. Um, as tempting as it is to have a look at your Yorkshire pudding in the oven while it's cooking, just avoid it at all costs. Anytime you open the oven, you're going to lose air out of your Yorkshire pudding and it's going to, it, it, it's going to start collapsing. 
Um, if you've got a light in your oven, that's great. I don't, but um, so I, I always tend to generally just leave mine shut. Um, just looking at my timer now, it's got about another 11 minutes or so until it's ready. Um, so that means we've got about five or six minutes before we put our, uh, put our greens on. But what we want to try and do is get everything ready at the same time so it's all ready to pop out, pop out on the table. Um, so I've got these lovely tender stem broccoli. All right, it's ready to go in. Got the teas ready. I'm just going to quickly rinse this off and we use this to put our toad on the hole on before it goes on the table. So, dry the board off. There we go. Got a lovely, uh, lovely Oxford events tea towel to do that with. There we go. Uh, Christmas presents for all our clients. If you want, if you want one, if you're desperate for an Oxford events tea towel, slide into our DMs on Facebook or Instagram. Send us a message. Send us your address, and we'll, we'll, we'll send one of these out and we'll post to you uh, free of charge. So thank you for watching tonight. And, and um, if this goes down well, we'll definitely do some more uh, so, so, some more live cooking feeds for you um, at, at a later stage, maybe next week as well. On uh, is it Wednesday today or Tuesday? I can't remember. It's the thirty first, but uh, yeah, we 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 definitely be keen to do so, so, some more uh, so, some more cooking. If you've got anything you want to, us, us to address, particularly as well, any questions you want to ask while we're uh, while we're here, please do, um, do do give us a question, and we'd love to uh, love to answer them for you. Um, that'd be great. Um, so, not a lot else to do apart from make sure that everything's ready for serving up. So, um, I'm just looking around for a jug to put the gravy in, um, and it's probably been stolen to use as a vase. It seems to be what happens to most of uh, our cooking jugs. But we have got this lovely jug with the milk in, so we, what we can do is pop that milk into something else, and we'll use that to put our gravy in. There we go. Lovely. So we'll give our, give our jug a little rinse out there. Dry that out as well. Good. And half the battle with when, when you're cooking is making sure that you're really well prepared for everything. So I mean, even about 10 minutes before I actually serve my dinner, I'm making sure that I've got everything prepared. Um, I don't need this water just yet. This water's hot. So what we can do is you know, just, just use that water to, to heat the jug up. Um, but before we put the gravy in, um, just take at least take the cold edge off it, um, and that's going to make it make your gravy not go cold quite so quickly. And then I can actually just leave that on the side next to the uh, next to the pan, and that's going to keep let let the jug you know, keep nice and warm. We then need a bowl to put our vegetables in. Um, somewhere down here, we should have a, a nice little bowl that we can use to put our veg in. Let's have a. Have a look, there we go, lovely. And to warm that bowl up, I'm going to be cheeky, just pop it on top of the pan, and the steam's going to warm that up from the underside, just to, uh, just to, uh, just to again, take, take, the, uh, take the cold edge off it, and also keep the, uh, keep the veg nice and warm when we put it in. So, just check the time once again, just to make sure that we're, uh, we're running on time. We're looking good. Just give my gravy a stir. And that's being fantastic. Good consistency. It's just on the thick side, so I'm just going to pop a tiny bit of water into there. And then that bowl is also serving as a lid for the pan as well, which is quite good, so it means that water's going to heat up nice and fast. Um, let's just taste that gravy again, just to make sure that it's, uh, it's how we want it. So, get a little spoon. And that is super. I mean, that is that is where dreams are made. That is a fantastic onion gravy. Thank you very much, Fisto. Same day there again. Jolly good. So, just uh, what we're going to do now is pop our vegetables into the pan. Got our purple sprouting. Wait. Season the water. Obviously, so important to get that bit of salt in there. Um, and what I'm going to do, first of all, just put the purple sprouting in and then just pour the peas over the top and then we just make sure that all the uh, all the heads are under water and then pop 
that bowl on top. And like I say, that's just gonna, gonna heat through. Um, I've just turned the gravy down just to simmer because it's pretty much ready to go now. Um, so, in the meantime, got that ready for our toad in the hole. We shouldn't need the, uh, the salt again. Um, red wine, you know, that, that is a really vital ingredient, but we, we, we'll pop that on the table um, to, to eat. Good, so, let's clean our uh, worktop now, ready for, uh, ready for dinner. So we've got this lovely board here to put our, uh, to put our um, toad in the hole on. Got our knife to slice it up with, the spatula to serve it with. And now it's just a waiting game, waiting for those veggies to finish off. Um, if you wanted to heat up your plates, um, pop them in the uh, pop them in the oven. Or in this instance, because we don't want to put them in the oven, I'm just going to pop those on top of that pan as well, just to get them a bit of heat. My beloved father, who can barely cook a beef burger um, or anything, you know, half decent, um, actually taught me that trick. So well done, Dad, and thanks for the uh, thanks for the much needed culinary uh, culinary education. Um, so we've got the jug, and that is indeed nice and hot. Just keep it nice and warm there. And I think we've got everything pretty much ready to go, apart from the uh, the table's not laid, but that, that doesn't really matter. I mean, any, anyone can do that. You can call on your, uh, I mean, your beloved housemates to do that, but the response is, uh, you know, it, it's sometimes positive, it's sometimes not. Um, it just depends if it hears you or not, really. Um, a few knives and forks. One, two, and forks. Lovely. Knives and forks at the ready. Okay. Couple more wine glasses for the table just to uh, look after everyone and make sure they're all well fed and watered. Especially in this uh, this time of isolation, you always got to look after your friends. It's quite a good idea. To, good, great thing to do actually. Uh, one night is just to really just go all out, dress up, put your dinner jacket on, put your uh, put put your dress shirt on, your bow tie, your dicky bow, and just have a have an extravaganza dinner, you know, three, three or four courses and just, you know, sit down, drink a load of wine, enjoy a load of food and, yeah, e even if it's just two or three of you, like, like we are in our house, we, uh, we love doing it. Or even if, you know, even if you're just by yourself, it could be a good fun thing to do one night, just pop your dinner jacket on, pop a bow tie on and, uh, and enjoy a dinner for one, hey? Why not? Why not? So, we've got, uh, that, that bowl's certainly nice and warm now. This board's not warm, but the, 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 um, what, what was I going to say? The, the, the toad in the hole is going to be super hot, so that, that doesn't really matter. We can pop that straight on there and it'll be absolutely fine. Um, good. Uh, what else? That's about it. So, the veg has got about another minute, the gravy's ready to go, and that, I'm hoping, um, given the 20 minutes it's had, should be about ready. So, at this stage, we're going to start getting everything ready. So, we've got a nice hot jug for the gravy. So, we get our, uh, our pan of gravy. Oh! Don't give too much to the floor if you can avoid it. We just pour that gravy into our gravy jug. Lovely. There we go. Pop that in the sink. We need a uh, we need a strainer for our uh, for our veg. Luckily we've got one on hand right here. So careful not, not to burn yourself on anything. That's the other the other thing. So just get our uh, get our plates off there. Yeah, it's certainly nice and hot. We've got our, our tender stem and our peas, or purple sprouting and peas. Let's just get a piece of that out just to check that the uh, that the stems cook through. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love, I don't, I hate rather cooking my veg all the way through, so it's you know discoloured and lacking in texture. I think that the, the less you cook veg, the more nutrients, the more um, more more texture you've got in your vegetables, the better. Okay, so. We'll take those over the sink, just drain the vegetables. We've certainly got a, uh, a generous help in there for the three of us. Now, any decent chef always just finishes their veg with a tiny bit of salt. 
and a little knob of butter. So just get some butter out the, uh, out the butter dish there. Quite little, I don't mean a huge amount, it's literally just a, a little knob. No pun intended there. And just stir that through the veg. Quite a bit of pepper on that vegetable as well, or on those vegetables rather. So, pepper and salt. We can pour those out into our lovely serving dish that we've got prepared. Nice and warm here. Just try and lift some of that purple sprout into the top so it doesn't look like you've just got all the peas. Pop the uh, heat off there. Let's get that a little shake. Lovely, look at that, fantastic. Um, and then, so now we've got our, our gravy ready to go. We've got our tender stem and peas. And then, last but not least, fingers crossed this is ready. It's a bit, bit of a gamble really doing this. Um, here's my little spatula. There we go, that's the timer, just in time. So we get our toad in the hole out of the oven now. Look at that, boy hey. That's what we call a toad in the hole. And run the spatula around the edge. Let's lift that out onto the board like so. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's our first live video, Toad in the Hole, Purple Sprouting, Peas and Caramelised Red Onion Gravy, all ready to go, and that's taken us 39 minutes. So not too bad, um, you know, it, it, and that's with me waffling away in the background as well. So, uh, so there you go, quick cheeky dinner for, uh, for three in isolation, Toad in the Hole, Tender Stem, Petit Pois and Onion Gravy. Thank you very much for listening. Cheerio.